It was the second Sunday of Advent in 1941. Just as people were leaving church services in this season centered on peace, love, hope, and joy, that many Americans learned they were now at war. News of Pearl Harbor began to spread and they knew that the world would never be the same. Of course, you and I look back on that event and that we understand that the, uh, uh, the fact that, that they were no longer at peace wasn't something that happened in quite the instant of the events of that morning. We understand that they had not really been at peace uh, because peace is more than just an absence of declarations of war or the absence of armed conflict. Peace, as we understand it in scripture, is something much deeper and much broader than the simple notion that one is at peace or at war. True peace isn't just battleships in port, but the very presence of justice and righteousness and freedom from fear. And we hear in uh, this morning's scripture that peace really begins as a point of departure in um, reconciliation, repentance, forgiveness. Last Sunday, we contemplated Christian hope. And this Sunday, the second Sunday of Advent, we consider what it means to be people of peace. And we do so by looking to what's called the Canticle of Zechariah, what Makita read for us this morning. It's also known as the Benedictus. Um, and it is uh, a song of praise raised by Zechariah uh, at the birth of his son, John. Zachariah and his wife were an elderly couple, childless, though not by choice. And uh, Zachariah was a priest and following out his uh, priestly duties when he had a visitation that informed him his wife was to bear a child. Now this seemed so sketch to Zachariah that he did not believe such a thing were possible. Indeed, no one would have. Um, and in his skepticism, he was made mute. It's not until after the birth and naming of his child that his tongue is freed and his first words are this hymn of praise, this song of joy. And in that song, we are... Uh, taught, we are instructed about what the work and life and role of the person we now come to know as John the Baptist will be. He will set the stage, prepare the way, lay the groundwork for all that Jesus will do as the Savior. By the tender of, uh, by the tender mercy of God, we will be given light, those of us who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. And John will guide our feet into the way of peace. Peace is an important theme and idea in Luke's gospel. He uses it far more than any of the other gospel writers. You, Luke uses the word peace 13 times in the gospel of Luke and six times in the book of Acts. Just, just for comparison's sake, so you understand how much more amplified this um, uh, idea is for Luke. Ma Matthew uses it three times, Mark uses it two times, John uses it five times. So we're talking, you know, a magnitude more focus and concentration for Luke on what it means to be a people of peace and how the life of Jesus can lead us into a life of peace and, and, and help us be a part of the work of peace. 
But we learn in this canticle and in the work of John the Baptist is that um, peace is born out of repentance, forgiveness, and reconciliation. Reconciliation with God and with one another. The absence of peace then involves distance and a breakdown in relationships. The absence of peace is somehow grounded in our inability to recognize our own wrongs and to find the means to forgive the wrongs of one another. Peace, it seems, is grounded in healthy, tender, generous relationships. The other thing I hear in this text is a reminder that peace will not just show up at our doorstep, but that peace is a work of movement and motion. John, it says, will guide our feet in the way of peace. Guide our feet in the way of peace. New Yorkers are a, a, a city of walkers. We get around a lot um, on our feet. And we have to know how to go. We have to be able to sort out which direction we want to move. And one of the things that kind of makes me and I think a lot of other people who live here crazy is when people are just standing around, blocking the way, kind of looking up or, or now kind of looking on their phone, confused and confounded by uh, the layout of this city, confused and confounded about what direction they'd like to take and how to get to where they're going. But we like to move on our feet quickly and with purpose and the clarity. That's what it feels like to me when I'm out and about in the city. That's when it really feels like New York, when you're able to walk, to make strides with um, some speed towards a destination. The sense that you know where you're going. You're not just kind of like standing around. And, you know. That's what God offers to do for us in the life of Jesus. To give us a direction to begin with the work of repentance and forgiveness and reconciliation, and then to move with purpose, with hopefulness, with a sense of expectation towards peace. If we just stand still, peace is, is not suddenly going to arrive. If we just kind of wait, and look around, we will not find ourselves surrounded by peace. But peace is a work of action and movement and purpose. And we are called into that work as disciples of Jesus. And we find the beginnings of our steps in the work of repentance, the work of searching our hearts and recognizing our own shortcomings and failures. You know, the, the world is filled with all kinds of ways for us to pretend we aren't who we are. All kinds of ways that we can ignore the ways we've fallen short or the ways we've failed one another. Sometimes the way we have failed one another is not only to not see ourselves honestly, but not to see one another honestly and authentically. So the, the work of peace begins with an honest and honorable assessment about who we are and who we have not been. And about who those we live with are and who they have not then. 
begin to search our hearts for the space to be gracious and merciful, to be kind, to find the means to forgive ourselves and one another, and to be reconciled to God and one another with the expectation that that will help lead us in to peace. That will create for us a space in which we can be people of peace, working together to create a world full of peace, not not simply a world where we're not outwardly fighting, not simply a world where all of our resources and energy go into defense and arms, but a world where we can live side by side with those who are very different than us without fear. For that is one of the pieces of this text this morning the assumption that we might be able to serve the Lord in peace without fear, that that would create the space for holiness and righteousness. Fear guides so much of what we do. Fear of one another Fear of what we don't have. Fear of who we might find ourselves to be if we stopped being busy for a brief moment. And so we acquire and we get busy. And (laughs) the ironic thing about all this is, of course, there's no time where we acquire and get real, real busy more than in these days when we're supposed to be centered on peace. But greed and acquisition and fear all preclude peace. The invitation in these days is to begin with reconciliation, repentance, and forgiveness and to move with hope and expectation towards peace. That will require us to do real and hard work. In that real and hard work, may we find the road open and the way easy towards peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.